Hello and welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Cardinal Cast. I'm Lonnie Watson, high school counselor. I haven't been here for a little while. Um, I'm riding solo today. Happy spring break to any kid, eighth grader, ninth grader, anyone watching today. I am not officially on spring break yet. Tomorrow will be our spring break day. We are getting taught up at the college today, so it is super fun. Um, I'm trying to figure out my sound here. Hopefully it is, there is some sound. We've had a video with no sound before. Uh, I'm, I'm stoked. I snuck out. Okay, I'm sneaking out of our training today to talk about what it's like to be a freshman at Shattered High School. And I think that this is such an important topic and that we have so many uh, parents and students, um, new students this year, a nice big incoming eighth grade class, and a lot of things to talk about that I might make it into a three-part series. And I'm thinking today I will focus on classes. So what to expect from classes your freshman year at Shattered High School, because that's the question I get asked all the time. Um, our training today is phenomenal, by the way. We are right in the midst of making sure everybody in our system, teachers, staff, para, um, everybody is trauma-informed and has practices trauma-informed care. And if I have anybody who's in early childhood education, you guys had similar training, I think last month maybe, um, and these practices are phenomenal. Uh, he's preaching to my heart, you know, everybody who knows me knows I'm all about connection, connection, connection with kids. Um, I have a lot of parents who talk to me about parenting. The teenage years are tough. Like, teenagers, I don't envy you. You could not pay me enough money to be 14 again. There's not enough money in the world. Be like, Warren Buffett, you keep your money. I'm not going back to be 14 or 15. Luckily, I think it continues to get better and better and better forever. And the nice part about transitioning over from the eighth grade year to the ninth grade year is you have a little bit more choice in course selection and you have a little more choice in activities and you get to mingle with upperclassmen a little bit more and so it's, it's a little bit more freedoms. Um, so uh, students tend to like that. It gets better and better and better as, as we go. Uh, so speaking of trauma-informed care, I just have to, I gotta tell this funny story before I start here. And I got to give a shout out to Miss Carrie at the Child Development Center because they had this training last month. Um, and trauma-informed care is not just about taking care of kids and trauma. It's about taking care of all kids and connecting with all kids. And like as parents, this is good advice for us. I'm, I'm in the toddler stages of life, but and I have a drama mama. But um, as parents, it's good advice too. And as teachers, uh, before we discipline and before we have can teach because discipline is to teach. We need to connect first. And Miss Carrie, bless your heart. I'm going to tag you on this on Facebook. Handled my daughter brilliantly last week. Um, Miss Reese was having one of her meltdowns. And I think actually she might have been having a little bit of a, a verbal girl fight with another little toddler in the bathroom. And she could hear Reese was upset. And instead of disciplining the girls or lecturing the girls or yelling at the girls. She just simply said, as Reese walked out, she said, Reese, can I give you a hug? And I guess, I guess Reese just hugged her and just bawled and said, I'm sorry, I'm just having a tough time. <laughs> so shout out to, to Miss Carrie at the CDC. You're killing it. Um, and shout out to all the teachers who are not on spring break today and are learning how to better care for our kids in our district. Shout out to our administrators who uh, brought in the, the level of professional development that we have today. It's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. So I'm loving it. Okay, I could go on a rant about that. Let's talk freshman year. Shattern High School, eighth graders, you are now, I, you're my babies now. I'm just going to say, you're my new babies. It, the year has already started for me next year because I just got finished making the schedule. And I think it's solidified. We just presented to staff yesterday. They're supportive. There's a few changes just to shake the cart, as always, that I think is going to be really positive for kids. Um, but let's talk classes. This is the number one question I get when I'm out and about. Like, I'll be in the grocery store, and a parent or a student or someone will come to me and say, um, why do I have to take these certain classes freshman year? Because you're gonna find out, eighth graders, when you already have, because I've been over and talked to you about this, it's kind of limited on what classes you can take your freshman year at Shattern High School. And I wanna explain why. I wanna explain why. 
there are two different sets of rules and regulations that we have to abide by. Um, the first is the state of Nebraska regulations. Now, the state of Nebraska says you need um, so many credits to graduate. You need four years of English. You need three years of math. You need three years of science and so on. So the state of Nebraska has a set of regulations that says you're not walking across any high school stage until you have taken all these classes and you have it on a transcript. That fancy piece of paper I talk about all the time, a transcript, which shows every class you've ever taken and every grade you've ever gotten. Um, so that's what the state of Nebraska says. So English, math, and there's a bunch of other requirements too. Health, physical education, it's all in there. Shattern High School then has board policy for what our graduation requirements are. And our graduation requirements aren't exactly what Nebraska has. Um, the state of Nebraska, we, we elevate that. And that's part of the reason why Shattern High School is so phenomenal, is we say, ha that's great, Nebraska, that you need however many credits. We require at Shattern High School 28 credits to graduate. So you need to be a student here. And that's part of the reason why we rank high every year across the state. Um, we require 28 credits to graduate. And some of those credits come from different places. Some of them are applied science. And you might be like, what is applied science? Well, that's like a career and technical education class. We make kids take two and a half credits of career and educational, technical education class. Um, and it could be anything from agriculture to woods to FCS classes to business classes, accounting, personal finance. And the reason that we do that is because we want students to explore their interests while they're in high school, right? We want them to be able to take classes that interest them. We might, you might take a class you hate, and I'm okay with that because did you learn something? If at minimum you learned that you're not going to go into business or you're not going to go into woods or welding, then, then that's a plus for me. Um, so the freshman year at Shattern High School is, is really pretty scripted. The kids have some choice. Kids, you get choice. You know I was there with you talking about your choice, but you're going to feel like your choice is so much more limited your freshman year than it is going to be in future years. Uh, gosh, your sophomore year, the only classes I make you take are English, science, and math. Three classes your sophomore year and the rest is up to you. Now, Every year we schedule, we say, are we meeting graduation requirements? Um, and so we, we do individual meetings and make sure, and, and we all do, as long as you don't fail, you know, too many classes. So freshman year, though, I think sophomore year, only a math, a science, and an English. Freshman year, we make you take the whole kit and caboodle. Our goal your freshman year is, it's kind of multifaceted goal, but really we want to get as many state requirements done as we can that first year. So that when you're a little bit older and more mature and able to know what your interests are, then you can explore those interests in those later years. Or heck, maybe you just say, I am I know I'm a college bound student and I want to get college credits while I'm in high school. I got your back, brother. I got your back, sister. We'll get you college credits. Um, so your freshman year... You're going to be in an English altogether. You're going to be in a physical science class altogether. You're going to be in a math class kind of separated depending on where you came in, um, whether you're, you're ready for Algebra 1 or you're ready for Geometry. You're going to be in a Social Studies class. It might be World History. It might be World Geography. It might be Civics. Um, it might be something. But you're going to take it because we're going to start meeting those, those requirements. You're going to be in a PE class because you know what? The state of Nebraska requires you have one and a half credits of PE to graduate. So we're going to get a half a credit of that done right away just to get it off the plate. You're going to be in a speech class and you're going to be in a health class. Because guess what? The state of Nebraska requires that you take both a speech and a health class to graduate. Um, from there, you're going to have some choices. You might choose to be in an egg class. You might choose intro to art. You might choose performing arts and do some drama. You might take a computer class because you know that Shadron High School requires you to take one computer class before you graduate. So you might get that done your freshman year. Uh, you might take, you might be musical. You might take band. You might take choir. You might take musical theater. Uh, you might take guitar. We have a lot, a lot of options uh, for different those different music classes, but not near as many options as we will have when you are a sophomore, junior, senior. And there's purpose behind that. I think the biggest complaint I get from parents is of the students who are ready to go hard. 
And by ready to go hard, I mean they want to take, they want to double up in math, they want to double up in science, they want to go, 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 go. And what happens is freshman year is really, there's no reason why we can't go, go, go. That's fine. Um, there's a couple things that make me a tiny bit hesitant. And um, at the end of the day, if I sit down with students and parents, we just individually decide what's best for kids. I just want to make sure everyone knows some of the reasons why maybe we don't always double up in everything core freshman year. Um, the first part of it is there's just not a lot of room in the schedule because once you get all those state requirements in, there's there's just not much there's not much room. And I would much rather a kid get their state requirements done their freshman year than have to sit in one of those speech nine or health nine classes when they're a junior or senior. Um, the second thing is the transition to high school, it's a hard time of life, right? You're figuring out who you are, your friend group, eighth graders, your friend group is like this now. By the time you're a freshman, it's going to go like this, and then it's going to go like this again your sophomore year, junior year, and that's normal. And you need to know as students and parents, it's 100% normal. It's healthy. You're figuring out who you are and who um, makes you the best version of yourself, right? We are who we associate with. And the true story is, you're going to be so busy doing all our fun activities that you're just not going to have time for this many friends again. It's just going to be you have time for a limited amount so that you hang out with people who bring out the best in you, right? Because we are who we associate with. So um, if, you're, if you're the most positive person in your friend group, eighth graders, or even any of my high schoolers who are watching this, you know my philosophy on that. It's time to get a couple new friends if you're the most positive because we want our friend group to, to mimic uh, what we believe in and who we are and who we want to be. So so you're going to take a lot of required classes, and you're going to be mostly with freshmen your freshman year. Um, I, parents, I don't think your kids are going to have a whole lot of homework their freshman year. They're going to have some, but the overall arching philosophy of our freshman teachers has seemed to be, let's get a lot of work done in class, and let's let these freshmen explore the tons of activities we have to offer at Shattern High School. Heck, Let's maybe let them overextend themselves a little bit their freshman year to figure out what fills their bucket, right? I tell the kids all the time, you're going to find out in life, and we do as adults all the time, and we're just not always good at reflecting on it, that you're going to get in an activity, and it's just going to give you energy. Even though you're expending energy while you're doing it, it just gives you, it fills your bucket, right? And then you're going to sign up for some things that all they do is deplete you right? Adults, we know this. Like, why do we keep saying yes to those things that deplete us? Uh, and you're going to find things in your life that suck your energy out. And so those are the things then when you're later in high school that you just bow out of. You say, it, that's just not for me. Um, and it could be any of the activities. It could be any of the sports. It could be any of the extracurriculars. It could be even community projects and service that you're doing uh, outside of school. So freshman year, I think is our teachers are so good to these kids, you guys. They're so good to these kids. And they kind of protect them a little bit from too much too fast. Uh, one of the reasons they do that is, like I said, we want kids to get as involved as they possibly can because there's tons of correlations out there. An involved kid is an, a kid who's learning, right? If there's involvement outside of school and extracurriculars and activities and clubs, and then there's going to be a lot of learning that goes on. And it produces better students and better, better humans altogether. So that's part of the reason why I think that the freshman teachers protect that from, from having an overload of homework. Um, the, the other reason why the double up in like math and science of freshman year sometimes doesn't work too, is that sometimes we, uh, can go too hard too fast and we can outpace ourselves. And that sounds weird, but hear me out here. The most important year you could take the ACT would be your junior year, right? Your junior year right before college. We want you to peak at that year. We want you to get your best score then um, all the way around. And in order to do that, you need to have taken a lot of algebra because that math section is a ton of algebra. Um, you need to take hard English classes, and you need to take some hard science classes, right? If there's a chance that you could outpace yourself, I have students who want to hurry up and do all the math right away. Well, if you're a junior and you're in calculus, there could be a chance that you don't remember all the algebra that's actually on the ACT, 
the perfect situation is that for the ACT, you'd probably be in trig your junior year because half of trig is algebra three, and then the other half of trig is trigonometry, which there's a few questions on the ACT. So we've had students who were so advanced and took so many so fast that by the time they got to the most important testing years of their life, um, they'd forgot some of the material. Um, so that's an interesting conundrum there as well. So pace is important. It's not the only thing. If you're ready for certain levels of classes, we, we go. We put you in. We've had, had different levels of kids come in in all different, um, different classes, and we partner with the college. That is what I'm super excited for, partner with the college. And if we run out of offerings for you, I got offerings, offerings for you at CSC, and I got relationships with those teachers. So, for example, if you run out of a science class, or an egg class. I have a student right now who's teaching an egg class up. Well, she's not actually the teacher, but she has taught lessons in her egg class up at the college and she's only a junior. Um, so if you are so passionate in one area and run out of classes to take that we have, we got your back on that too. Uh, but just know the tests that you take for college entrance exam are very specific. I don't love them. I'm not, I know, I'm not gonna get on a soapbox about it, but but um, they're very specific, and we've, we feel like we've got a pretty good formula for that to tell you what, what class at what time um, to be in, especially for those, or what we need to be going over your junior year in English, in math, in science. So we feel pretty confident on that, and I think our testing has proven that, and our, our rankings across the state has proven that, that Shattern does very, very well when it comes to testing. Now, it's not all about testing though, right? The schedule has to have balance to it. It has to have balance. Um, you're, the stress you feel is just going to be enormously elevated if you're not taking some classes that you love. So if you need some physical education, let's get a PE class in, in your schedule every year. If you are a music lover, you need to be in some of our music classes. You need something that makes you full and well-rounded, not just academic, academic. I hear a lot of times students say, I just want to hurry up and get them all over with, right? And so, and I would say that, so let's use English for an example. We don't let you. We make you take one English class every year. If you would want to double up, you'd be fine. You might have to repeat a class. We might run out at some point. Um, but we we don't at Shattern High School just take classes to hurry up and get them, you know, out of the way. An example of why we don't do that is called the Lonnie Watson, which was Lonnie Hughes example. So my, my high school or my senior year, S South Dakota is the same, only three years of math. And I actually, okay, so I'm a math major by trade, my first one, but I kind of struggled in math um, growing up. It was a class, I was kind of overly emotional, like as a middle schooler. So it was a class that, that made me cry a lot. I can remember the tears dripping onto my math homework. And, um, so by my senior year, I had survived all the math classes that I needed. And, but I knew I was going to go to college. I knew I wanted to go to college. I knew I, I didn't quite know what I wanted to do, but I know I knew I wanted a professional degree. Um, and so I took my senior year off of math and what ended up happening, and I took physics. I, I think I remember having the conversation with my school counselor that said, you know, you, you need, if you're a college bound student, you can't have just slough your senior year. It's not going to serve you. And I said, all right, I'll take physics. I like science. Science is fine. I'll do physics. Physics was hard, by the way, um, but I survived it and I didn't take a math class. So here I am, a freshman at Shattern State College, and I'm in college algebra. That's the entrance level math exam they make everybody, or math class they make everyone take at Shattern State if your ACT score is even high enough to take that. So I'm in that math course at, Shad at Shattern State College, and all of a sudden I'm like turning into a seventh grader again, you guys. I am getting like C's and D's on all my tests, and everyone freaking around me knows what they're doing. So I feel dumb, right? I feel dumb. So what happens when Lonnie feels dumb? It starts to come out her eyeballs. So here I am again, trying to ask the teacher for help, but trying to like wipe away tears so they don't drop on my paper. And I think he thought I was crazy. And I didn't know what I was doing. And the reason I realized everyone around me didn't feel dumb was they took another year of math than me. And it might not have even been a higher level math that I ever took, but I had had a summer, a full school year, and a summer off of math. I didn't remember it. I didn't remember it. 
I didn't remember how to do some of the basic things that everybody else around me knew how to do. So I felt dumb. And there's nothing that puts a stop in you and and hurts your feelings more or makes you feel inadequate than, than when you don't feel competent. So we don't just hurry up and get classes done. Like you can't just get all your English done so you don't have to take them. Uh, and that's part of the reason why, because a lot of our students, about 70% of Shattern High School students end up going to college. And even the 30% that, that maybe don't is probably even less than that, to be honest. I think it's, it's a lot less than that. Uh, they, they usually do at some point or that what they've learned fits right into the internship or the military or their career path. So the learning is valuable at any level. So we never get this idea about classes that we just hurry up to get them over with. I like the idea of just pacing them out a lot better. Let's pace them out so we don't overload ourselves in any one semester and we're not overloaded with stress, um, but we still have that learning that gradually takes us to where we want to be. Uh, I have lots of students get into very, very competitive schools. I have sent students to Brown, to Harvard. I've got a student that got accepted to Notre Dame Honors, Honors Program this year. I mean, these are like less than 5% of all people who apply get into these schools. And I'll tell you what, it's not because they overloaded their schedule. It has nothing to do, your, your ability to get in to a prestigious university or college has everything to do with you being a well-balanced individual um, than it does having to do with like hurrying up and getting all the classes in in one year. So that's part of, of freshman year, why we make them take the state required classes. Let's get them done. There's nothing worse than your junior or senior year saying like, oh, I wish I would have taken that health class. I really need to get that in. And then having to sit back in with freshmen. So um, yeah, that's kind of our philosophy on classes. We really want um, some balance there. Uh, Shattern, High School, Shattern High School requires a lot of credits to graduate. Therefore, there's some very specific ones their freshman year that they need to take. Um, like I said, go through them again. An English class, math class, social studies class, science class. Would like a computers class. That freshman year is not a bad year to take it because you need one to graduate anyway. Um, we have some really cool classes like Intro to FCS, Foods and Consumer Science, if you like nutrition, if you like to cook, if you like to learn about food. Um, intro to Business, if you think you might want to own your own business someday or just learn the structure of how businesses work. Like how valuable for all of us, right? Um, intro to Business, Industrial Tech 9 and Drafting are some of my absolute favorites. Um, Drawing for architecture, industrial tech nine, you might do a little bit of woods, welding, and drafting, all three of them. We, kids just, they love those classes. Um, part of it because Mr. Butler's amazing, and part of it is because that's hands-on learning, right? And I, you can't tell me as a math major right here, I know nothing about like actually woodworking or welding or drafting, but you can't tell me that you can't apply that knowledge to a lot of other areas. So I'm, I'm interested in the cross-curricular stuff that goes on there when your brain's working in, in that facet. All students will take speech, and all students will take a class we call transitions. We used to call it freshman transitions, and now we just call it transitions. Transitions is where we get to get in with them and talk about um, what they might be interested in. They take tons of interest inventories and surveys to see like what their values are and where it would align in the world. Um, I don't want to call it a careers class, but we talk about careers in there. I'm just going to throw a plug out there. I am not here. We don't have school counselors anymore for me to pick a career for your kid, right? Like that's not, that's not what I do at all. We do a lot of inventory, interest inventories, assessments. Um, like I said, I'm more along the line of like helping your kid figure out what fills their bucket and what depletes it. Right? Because then when you know that, paired with what you're good at, then you can make career choices. There's no one career that I think every kid should be. I don't think every kid's got to figure it out by the time they're 18. The nice thing about putting some thought into it is it helps you drive that schedule for the next four, year, four years and make learning meaningful for you. Um, later on, we've got all these cool classes they could take, like basic nursing assistant where they could get their CNA in class. Um, they could get dual credit for personal finance and hopefully some accounting down the road. Uh, we've got 
tons and tons of career and technical offerings, including coding and AP computer science, um, that could eventually lead to careers. Uh, we get kids certified and certifications in um, business applications on the computer. Uh, we can even in welding down the road. So we do a lot of cool things with the career and technical side um, of the education as well. But they kind of get got to get through those intro classes to see where's my next, like where am I going next. Um, I mentioned intro to ag earlier. If as a freshman, you want to compete in FFA, you have to be an intro to agriculture. So when the schedules come out really soon, because I've already practiced that, well, not practiced, I've like tried to make them work uh, for the kiddos. And if you want to be an FFA and you don't have intro to ag on the schedule, you need to get that on your schedule. All students will be in PE9, all students will be in health. You can be in performing arts or um, fine arts, which be drawing and painting for fine arts. Um, performing arts would be uh, drama, musical theater, musical theater stagecraft, guitar, choir, band, and every student does need one credit of fine arts to graduate. So that might be something if you don't love it to get it over with your freshman year or if you do love it to pay some out, right? Like I wouldn't advise a kid to take musical theater, performing arts, and band all in the same year. You might want to, band and choir you could take every year. But you might want to space some of those classes out if there's any that, oh, it's kind of like with PE, right? I, every year I have students um, who are like, I want to lift every single year. I'm an athlete. I want to be in that weight room. And I'm like, yes, let's go. I want to be in that weight room too. However, you need to pace it out because if you take two PE classes two years in a row, you're going to run out of PE classes. Right? So if you want a PE class every year, we need to pace it out and make sure we get one a year and have some balance. So those are the classes um, that they can take their freshman year. Schedules are coming out. I might even put them in the mail next week. I'm going to start letting the kids who are in the high school, so starting with my juniors next week, come in and tweak theirs. So here's what, what happens. The kids tell me what they want. I pull them in one-on-one. -on -one. I try to make it happen before I pull them in. So I try to make this beautiful master schedule. It's a big giant pain in the butt and it never works exactly how I want it to work and I'll tell you why. But, um, but big master schedule and then I try to get every kid everything they wanted and when I can't get them what they wanted, I try to put their alternates in for what they couldn't get. Um, but then when they come in and they see it, it just makes more sense, right? This is what you you wanted, this is what you had to have, those go in whether they like to or not, have to have, and then we say, here's what, what are options for alternates to this class, and so then the kiddos get a chance to, um, you know, finalize it and make it look the way that um, works for them, and I tell them all the time, let's say they take eight classes in a year, but most of them take ten, let's say they take ten classes in a year, you're going to get that schedule and it's like, God, eight of my ten classes are awesome, exactly what I wanted. But those two, right? <laughs> and then I come in and I say, oh, I know, I tried my best, so what can we do other than those two? And it's funny because sometimes kids pick classes based on what their friends are interested in and take in. And so when we have to go to an alternate class, sometimes they like it so much they end up studying it. I'd say that for business. Sometimes kids don't think they want to go into business, and then they take one of our classes with our awesome teachers, and pretty soon they're like, I didn't even, I was not ever even going to take that. So sometimes it ends up being a huge blessing for students. There's no perfect schedule. I've done this long enough to know there's no perfect one. Nothing will be perfect. We have a, a very complex schedule at the high school and mostly because we have a lot of college offerings up here at the high school and career and technical offerings, which means <clears throat> we have a lot of what we call singletons where it's only offered at one period throughout the day. So that makes our schedule complex. Um, and it makes students have to choose sometimes between one or the other. We try to build it to our best abilities. They get a lot of opportunities for college credits. If you want to know how my student can earn college credits while in high school, I have a YouTube video on that. If you go to the Shattern High School YouTube page or scroll, you'd have to scroll or, or search our Facebook page, you could find that video of how to earn college credits while in high school. And Shattern State has a policy that those kiddos need to be juniors to start there with their college credits um, and for some of our dual credits. So, uh, 
it's even more important if that's a priority to get some of those state requirements out of the way earlier so that you can take those dual credit college opportunities. And those are really reduced rate, really awesome, um, taught by great instructors up at the high school. And I think that's where I'm headed. This is part one, classes. I think part two, I want to bring Mr. Mack in here and I want to talk a little bit about philosophy. And I want to talk about how much your kids are going to love their stinking teachers their freshman year because they're phenomenal and they do such a good job with kids. Um, they build relationships, they coach sports, they run clubs, they do all the things. Um, and, and I think we'll talk next episode of this on our philosophy at Shattern High School, what we believe in to our core, um, and how freshmen fit into that belief um, and how we run things at the high school. I'll be honest, and I'm going to think part three, I'm going to hit on, so part two, I think we're going to do core philosophies at Shattern High School for all our new parents and students, and part three, I really want to hit on the social emotional side of being a freshman. I think part of the reason that we, our teachers just know freshman year is not the year to go the hardest academically is because of the social emotional changes that happen throughout the course of that year especially if you're in athletics, especially if you're in activities. I talked a little bit earlier about your friend group goes from here to here to here as you get older, and that's normal, and that's developmentally appropriate. But there's also some developmentally appropriate things that are happening that those freshman, sophomore years that make can make school more challenging. So I want to talk the third session of this three-part series on um, – what it's like to be a freshman at, at Shadron High School or what to expect about the, the social and emotional side. Um, and any parents who are watching this who have had a freshman before, I hope you're sitting there nodding like, oh yeah, I've been through that. I know that. Maybe you can even um, drop me some comments down here below and, and uh, talk about your experiences as well. Uh, but yeah, I think it's a positive. I think it's a huge positive. A change is going to be so fun. Um, I meet one-on-one -on -one with students every year, and I do not ever have a student that says that their experience at Shattern High School was um, not more positive than, than those before. Um, and I think part of that is we do nice things up here, but more importantly than that, we're not any better than any other school. It just keeps getting better and better. Like, that's just life, guys. That's just life. Like, get out of these, like, varsity blues uh, shows that say it's the best times. So it always gets better and better. So every year, your brain's growing. Um, everything's a little less emotional. Freshman year, everything's a little more emotional. Maybe we'll talk about like healthy relationships in high school. We, I think we are going to do a podcast on that. Uh, but yeah, so three part series. Number one, courses at Shattern High School your freshman year. Schedules are coming out soon. Um, plan on those. I, now that I get to thinking, I'm thinking two weeks from now. I'm going to get those in the mail for freshmen and then always have the opportunity to come meet one-on-one -on -one with me, with parents, email, make swaps. It might be like you get the schedule and you're like, gosh, this looks awesome, except for I really didn't want to take intro to art. And then you just call me and I say, okay, here's your options. So it's as easy as that. Um, we're pumped to have you, new eighth graders and uh, parents with that group. And part one of a three-part series. All right. Part two, we're going to talk about our, our core philosophy at Shatter High School. Part three, I'm hitting on social, emotional things to know that might happen your freshman year. Thanks for joining me. I hope I had audio. I'll be back next week. I'm going to go continue to learn it up today.